Hey folks, thanks for joining me on this behind the scenes bonus process video lesson. This is for my study that I recently posted on Patreon, all the things you are walking base study number one. And in the description, I actually say I stay exclusively on the sixth and the fifth string, but I realized here at the beginning I did not. So I'm actually going to fix that. And I'm going to talk about the process here. Um, and I'm going to change a few things too. <laughs> so uh, this is going to be an updated version of what I posted. Sometimes I don't even post tabs. Um, I try to because I know many of you like tabs. But um, in this case, I'm, I'm going to fix this right now. Um, and I'm going to talk about this. I'm adding some chords. This is for comping. Walking bass lines is so important for comping, for learning about how to develop a single note line, keep the groove going. Uh, in that case, again, I was playing some chords. So again, I'm, I'm actually fixing this now to put it all on the sixth and the fifth string exclusively, just for study number one. Of course, I would bleed into the, the fourth string and maybe even the third string <laughs> on the guitar. It's so important, as I mentioned, to walk bass lines thinking like a bass player. Walking means just keeping a quarter note line going, not a half note, not a broken two feel, half notes with some quarters. And of course, you can add some grace notes and make it shuffle a little bit like I was doing with some open strings. That's kind of a good hack. Like, there's an eighth note. shuffle, a little eighth note there, shuffle. So again, you get the idea what I mean by that now, adding in a couple eighth notes, a little shuffle rhythm, ba-doom, boom, ba-doom, doom, but pretty much keeping the quarter notes. This is all targeting the roots, so it's all annotated here. I'm actually changing this right now just to stay exclusively on the sixth and the fifth string. Of course, again, we want to go into the fourth string and the third string. We want to take this concept so it starts to, you start to use this stuff for your soloing. And I do have some studies on that. I, che I recommend checking out my Fly Me to the Moon study where I started off with kind of like a bass and then I led into the leads, the single notes up high. So it really is good for you. Um, I'll do a new one on Fly Me to the Moon, some other songs as well, uh, so you can get this concept down. I check out my bass, my uh, G blues and blues studies and rhythm changes too and other swing stuff where I'm walking. It's about, a lot about walking the bass. And walking the bass means doesn't mean you have to change notes each time. You can just stay on one note. <laughs> you know, it's just, this is a pedal, but it's kind of still walking the bass. So if, you, if, you, if you're a fan of movement, this is a really important lesson in comping in general. Uh, so let me talk about what I'm doing here. This is a breakdown analysis, and I'm actually changing a couple things here now as well. Uh, I'm exclusively making sure it's on the sixth and the fifth string, as I had mentioned in the description. By the way, this lesson, it started off as a live stream a couple of weeks ago, maybe last week, actually, if you want to check out the lesson, it's on Patreon. Uh, the live stream is called well, All About the Bass, Walking the Bass, and uh, I kind of have a lot of PDFs there, too, if you're interested in getting in this topic. So thanks for joining me here. I'm connecting F minor to B flat minor, E flat 7 to A flat 7 by doing this. F, B flat, E flat, A flat. D, D flat, D, G, C. That's the first uh, eight bars. A lot of chords in the song, all the things you are. Uh, so I'm doing this. There's a chromatic note here, and that's the major third. You might think, major third on a minor chord? Absolutely, because it's acting more as a leading tone into the next chord. Like an F. This right here is what I'm saying. This is like putting F7 here or A diminished seven, if I were to harmonize it. Again, you know, kind of thinking that Barry Harris method, that's exactly what we're doing. Perfect for the Barry Harris method with chords too, like this. We could keep it going and uh, think chords, think harmony along with your bass. Uh, and little, for comping, stuff like this is very effective. D flat, D minor, G 
bisa So when I'm thinking here, I'm just going to show you the, the most important parts of the techniques. When I have minor chords, one, two, flat three, and if, if it goes through the cycle of fourths, that's when I like to add the chromatic note to lead us to the root of the next chord. So it's a chromatic line. Sometimes, as I had written previously, I'll go one, two, flat three, five, and then go into it. But in this case, I'm walking chromatically passing tone instead of going to the fifth, which would be a C note. And that's what I had written previously, this. So you can see that pattern here, one, two, three, five. These are called melodic cells. Then this is this right here is so important. This works great on a major chord too, and a dominant chord. Okay, so uh, this pattern, this bass line, one, two, flat, three, three, works beautifully on a major, minor, or dominant. Now this pattern here can work on a dominant or a minor chord. I'm just walking, descending from the root. Sometimes I call that eight, but I'm calling it one here. If it was major, I'd want to go. But for minor, for dominant, you have the flat seven. In this case, B flat minor. Now it's E flat dominant seven. I'm going one, two, three, five. But I think I'm going to just go ahead and change that here and do flat three and then the three. And that's it, again, kind of like what I was mentioning, that bluesier sound. Um, as I, as I again, um, as I mentioned, sometimes I don't, I, I, I know you all love PDFs, tabs, and paper, <laughs> uh, but sometimes I, I change these, so it's, it's kind of like a living, uh, <laughs> living thing here. What am I doing here? I'm talking to myself. There we go. And then uh, There we go. So that's a, a one, two, flat, three, three. That's the same as this. Why am I doing that now? Because I love that. When it follows the cycle of fourths, I like this a lot to have that one, two, flat, three, three into the one. So I'm, you can see the pattern here. And on the major, I'm going descending one, seven, six, five. That's called a tetrachord, by the way, if you want to be technical about the four notes and the dividing of the scale. Here's a new pattern melodic pattern one two three one I then go one two three five I then go one two flat three three I would not do that because it's not following the cycle it's not going from D flat to G flat okay unless I did tritone stuff but I don't want that here so I'm going one two three one and now this is just all about the this is Joe Pass style here but if you look at it theoretically, it's interesting that it creates these flat fives, root, flat five, root, flat five. So again, this one, I'm going to show you what I, what it would sound like with one, two, three, five. That's nice. Notice I put the word superimpose because the chord on the chart, which is on the chart, it would just say C major seven for two bars. But many people, I like to do this. Just filler. One, two, three, two. But then it goes to C minor. So there one into the C minor. So from the D flat. Oh, change this note there. I don't want to hear. So it's like this. And then into the C minor. Let me save that. Um, so let me play the first eight bars for you. One, two, three, four. See how nice and melodic. And it gives it four movement. And that was the next eight bars and we're at switch keys here. So that's the same pattern one two flat one two flat three three one two flat three three one two three five that's not right that's <laughs> why i gotta change that that's one flat seven like i'm going through that I'll, and I'll, I'll update that pdf too 
um, but some of, some of you will have already downloaded it and will have the other version. Again, there's so many possibilities. I'm, this video is meant to show you the thought process behind this. One, two, flat, three, three on the minor. One, two, flat, three, three. Why? Because it's following the cycle for C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat. See what I mean? Look at my fingers. C, fourth. And then it goes fourth. This song is so important. So check it out. string sometimes I change it so let me just see what what I do there I went F one uh, where am I here F minor <laughs> B flat seven E flat major seven I'm gonna change this because sometimes I like to stay on the length of the string so I went I went Again, I went one, two, three, five. There's a lot of typos in this. I'm, I'm glad I'm going through this <laughs> uh, with y'all. So thanks for checking this video out. One, two, three, five, one, flat five, one, flat five, one. So on these quick two fives, these approach notes, that's what the, the term is, approach note, from half step above or below. I'm choosing above. Just watch my old lessons on the G blues or the blues walking bass when I first did my all about the bass studies because there's some really good examples there for walking bass lines on two five ones one six two fives in that recent Joe Pass uh, lesson I posted to the intro there's so many great subs if you love subs that's Joe Pass is the best at that really <laughs> G major, one, two, three, five, eight, seven, six, five. So those are two really nice patterns when you're just on a, I'll show you one more too, when you're just on a um, static chord to go one, two, three, five, or seven, eight, seven, six, five, I can say meow, 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 the meow mix. I also like to go one, two, three, two, pedaling, one, two, two beats each. And if it goes to the three, I might do this. Um, you're gonna see that in a second. Some superimposed changes here. If I know it's gonna go to the two chord, I might go one, four, three, six, two, five, so that's what you're going to see next here. So on the A minor, D7, G, and this is just added again. Uh, sometimes I like to go G, C, B, E, if it was going to repeat. Actually, that would be a good place to do that here. G, C, B, E, but I didn't do that. That will be in version two. Remind me. There's so many good little things. Uh, And then now to the F sharp. Oh, so again, look at the numbers. It's the same step. I'm just kind of, uh, kind of editing, making sure I'm doing the right thing. What I wrote: one, two, flat, three. And then one on the not on the E. I'm just E major seven. I'm on the E major seven chord. I'm going one, two, three, five. Continue one, two, flat three, three on the C chord. One, two, three, five. This is all correct. One, two, flat three. Um, ba -doo. You're going to sing these. Now, on this four minor four, I go one, two, three, five. One, two, flat three, five. One, two, three, one. So again, I'm just recycling a lot of the same melodic motifs, 
just having fun improvising it with it. But there is a method, there's a system to this. Okay, and all of these are starting with the root for this example here. But again, you can start to target other notes. But really, honestly, if you're a bass player, you pretty much will be playing the root, <laughs> you, you know. Otherwise, you're reharmonizing. You got to be a little bit careful about that too. Uh, but what for leads? I I tend to take this concept and then I start to target and connect the thirds, and it harmonizes beautifully with your bass player because you're creating tense. It's really rad. So you got stuff like this, you know, just connecting again. That that's where you're gonna do chords. Barry Harris method and essentially too. Um, so again, just to finish this out here, we got the four minor four one one two three five one two flat three five one two flat three five and then on the B here I'm doing the diminished. Uh, it's just an arpeggio. And arpeggios are essential, of course, but you don't want to just hear arpeggios. It's not really a walking line if you're only arpeggiating chords. <laughs> following this as written. Just little theater variations. Anyways, that was just a little demonstration there off the cuff of keeping that bass line going, quote, bass line, but I'm thinking soloing leads, and then started adding some other licks, of course, some two fives. It's really fun. It's a different approach from only thinking uh, arpeggios and lines and licks and runs. It's really fun and creative and exciting. I do recommend that you take this study. Um, I'm going to probably put it on some other strings. I think All the Things You Are is a pretty awesome song pretty intense song. So I hope you enjoyed this bonus process video lesson. Do let me know in the comments if you enjoy it, because if you do, I'll do more of it. Cheers.